By now, you've seen videos and pictures of the new lighting we've installed, and the lighting takes on several different aspects. First, it's much brighter than it used to be, and that is, of course, a good thing. So all the original lighting was upgraded to LED, which is brighter and much more efficient, needing changed much less often as well. Secondly, new additional pendant lighting has been added. The new pendant lighting not only provides additional lighting, but adds a whole new and very eloquent addition to the worship space. Furthermore, the pendants have several different lighting elements in them, which allow for various lighting scenarios, providing an amazingly beautiful ambiance for activities such as adoration and other things. And when fully lit, along with all the original lights, it is very bright in the church, while at the same time, not too bright. In other words, the warmth of the space maintains its integrity. We also modified the speakers of the sound system. You'll recall the speakers were mounted and hung from the ceiling in various parts of the church. All the speakers have now been recessed into the ceiling, essentially hidden now, providing for a much cleaner and crisp look to the ceiling. The niches that house the statues of Mary and Joseph have also been refashioned. Originally, the niches were triangular, we might say, with two sides on the right and left slanting inwards and the backside flat with a white background. Now they are browed like a half circle and painted the same color blue as the ceiling above the sanctuary. Furthermore, there is new woodwork bordering the niche that is also browed, having the same design as the doors on the back side of the sanctuary. We also put in new statues of Mary and Joseph that the Building Enhancement Committee felt matched better the scheme of the overall enhancement. And I have to say, these statues are absolutely beautiful. They're from Italy, made of solid marble, and weigh in at approximately 1,200 pounds apiece. They're also a foot taller and a little bit wider than previous statues. A great perk of these statues is the fact that the previous ones now adorn the entrance of the school, where Jesus, Mary, and Joseph are placed right next to each other, making up a beautiful image of the Holy Family. We'll also have a brand new stained glass window just above the baptismal font that will have the same image that can be seen when entering the worship space from the narthex as well as when leaving the nave and going into the narthex. And this is going to be a, a beautiful stained glass image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, which will be right in the middle of the window, a more anatomical a heart with the crown of thorns around it and a cross coming out the top. It's a very popular uh, Catholic image of the Sacred Heart. And there'll be two adoring angels on the left and right that will be bowing to the Sacred Heart. And there'll be light flames, somewhat like what you see in the Saint stained glass of the windows in the back of the sanctuary that will be coming from the heart and it's absolutely beautiful. And of course, a new paint job was in order after nearly 18 years of occupancy. The ceiling remained the same color with several fresh coats of brand new white paint, and it looks incredible. The walls to the left and right of the sanctuary, along with the soffits around the entire church, have been painted a new Irish cream color which offers a warm new contrast to the white of the ceiling. And of course, the back of the sanctuary is markedly different with the regal gold faux color along with the pilasters made of faux marble. The painting scheme really helps accentuate the beauty of the sanctuary while highlighting the reality of what's happening there and gives an overall look of beauty to the entire church. Furthermore, below the soffits around the church, where the stations hang, are new acoustical panels which have been changed out as the old ones were getting rather dirty and worn out. 